Hey everybody, we are getting ready to build a changing table for baby Harrison that's gonna later on turn into a end table or some kind of storage shelf once he grows out of diapers. And one of the design qualities that we want it to have is a raised wood grain texture, one that you can see and touch and really just add an extra detail that's gonna be fun for us to create. Now the thing I think that's really cool about a raised wood grain effect is that it gives whatever you're working on an old worn look. I've seen some furniture at World Market and Pottery Barn that have this. I've seen railings and some of the scenery at some of the rides at Disneyland. It's also great for props that you want a lot of detail on. It'd also be really good for old creepy creaking doors in a haunted mansion or a squeaky coffin. What was that? It'd be good for old western town props. Arr, it'd even be good for me pirate ship. So let me show you a little bit about what I got going on here. Okay, so there's a lot of ways that you can achieve a uh, raised wood grain. A one old reliable way is to take a butane torch and then basically just go through and burn the top layer of your wood. Get yourself a, a good black layer and then go in manually with a little wire brush. You can use one of these big beefy ones too if you want to go it faster. It'll dig out all that burned soft wood in between the hardwood and it will create that raised grain for you. Another way that you can go is if you get these little different adapters for a drill. Uh, you can use like a power drill or a battery drill and then go through and dig out some of the uh, wood grain that way. Another really cool way to create this effect is if you can get your hands on a sandblaster. Since I don't have one of those, I'm just going to use the tools that I do have available. I actually had this wire brush already for a grinder and um, it does a really good job. It just doesn't go very fast. So I went and I got this beefier one for the grinder. It's about 16 bucks. And you got to be real careful though not to dig too much wood out with this. And then I go back in with this one and kind of make it pretty. After that, I either take some sandpaper or one of these little palm sanders and I'll smooth it out the rest of the way. So I'll show you guys right now how to do it. It's real easy, nothing real big, but it, it really does add like a nice little texture to uh, wood if you want to get a little fancier. Another trick that may help while doing this method is to cover the wood with a wet cloth or soak the wood in a tub for a couple hours before you torch it. I like using the grinders over the drill because I feel like I have much more control of the pressure and the speed as I go over the wood piece. Just keep digging and digging and then feathering out the edges. Just make sure you go nice and slow, nice and slow. You can always go back over and dig down even more until you're happy with it. This wire brush wheel has softer bristles, so it works really great for getting rid of those deeper scratch marks left by the stiffer bristles. I try to go slow with a little pressure on the end grain, knocking down all the edges and corners so I don't overdo it. One thing to note is I have created a little raised wood grain on plywood. It's not an awful lot. You also have to be really careful not to sand through the top ply. You can see on this end piece here how I just drew out the areas that it's going to be glued to other pieces of wood. Like this piece is going to have a little biscuit joint there. So you um, just have to stay in the lines. And I really like this angle grinder because you have so much control and you can go real slow. And it's like coloring. It's like a, it's like a fancy little coloring book. Only with a wire brush. You just stay in the little lines. 
Ooh. Ooh. No, not too much there. Ooh. 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 I just wanted to show you guys that it also does work on 2x4s and 2x6s. Here's a 2x4 that I cut a little uh, forklift hole in and uh, went through with the uh, wire brush and then sanded it. You can see it raised it pretty well, even on the end grain there. So, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'm using a palm sander with like a 120 grit to just smooth over everything, get rid of any of those larger scratches. That brings up another good point though. If you just have a sander and you sand over a period of time with several different grits, you can also create different levels of wood grain. All right, here's a side-by-side -side difference. You can see and feel the added detail. The cool thing is once you paint and stain this, any little bit of sheen will also help the effect stand out. And I wonder, still I wonder about the wood grain. Ooh, ah, bumpy wood grain. Oh. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for how I create a raised wood grain effect. And remember, for those of you who don't have fancy tools, you can always use a torch and a wire brush. You're just going to be there scrubbing all day wishing that you had power tools. Scrub, 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 scrub. And if you do have power tools, remember to go nice and slow. Don't be like me, where you get all crazy and end up digging too deep, and then you have to spend 20 minutes trying to feather out the edges to make it look nice again. But shh, don't tell anybody I did that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please leave any comments of any other ideas or techniques that you guys know to do this kind of effect. And don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.